Tom here from Lawrence Systems, and let's talk about Synology Virtual Machine Manager. That's not something I use much in production. We just don't really have as many companies out there using it, but I know a lot of people in their home labs are using it. I have several staff members that use it to run some Linux VMs. And I threw a couple Windows VMs on there to do some testing, and we've been randomly unplugging the Synology and having some fun with it. And so far, it has worked really, really well and has not fallen apart at all on us. And I thought it's worth mentioning, and a few people have asked me questions about it, so let's talk about it real quick. Now, this is the Synology RS1221 Plus that I reviewed uh, just a few days ago. I'll leave a link to that review, and it's running a Ryzen V 1500B. Now we added four more gigs of memory than they shipped it to us with uh, in the demo that Synology provided because we wanted to run these virtual machines and well running a virtual machine with Windows and only four gigs for the entire system wasn't quite adequate. We wanted at least another four gigs in there. Now the nice thing about the virtual machine system is it's baked in and it's free but and I just say but just so we can get this out of the way really quick. Synology VMM, the basic machine that comes with it, versus Synology VMM Pro. It's a few different options you get here. So you get cluster management, you get QoS settings, you get CPU overcommit, physical CPUs times two, physical CPUs times four with the Pro. And then it goes down to say things like live migration and high availability, which does require three or more nodes and live migration all need to be purchased via license and it's a not perpetual license it is a one year vmm three node subscription 149 on bnh right here that's the price as of today march 9th it may be different here in the future march 9th 2021 but i at least want to give people an idea they have a three node subscription they also offer a i believe seven node subscription which this is the price as of March 9th, 2021 for the seven node subscription fee. All right, now let's get back over to how it works, how it functions, and it's actually relatively easy to set up. So we can go here and click on virtual machines. There is a pause because I have two Synologies tied together in here. I'm currently just running on the demo license. It gives you a 30 day trial for the pro version of the license. And I just want to, you know, test out some of the features such as the live migration. And yeah, all that works perfectly fine. Unless you're using two different processors, then yes, that doesn't work quite as fine, but you can shut down the VM and move it between servers. If you would like to import a VM, we can look at that first. It does standard OVA files and does support some disk images. I didn't truly really do much testing with disk images, but um, OVA files are common because open virtualization uh, architectures have become somewhat common. So you can find a lot of things already built in an OVA file. And uh, that's really convenient that they have an import for that. Once you have these machines up and running, or if you'd like to create one, their wizard is relatively simple to do as well. We can build a Microsoft one, which does help you with the Synology guest tools. They have a CD you can download and attach to the virtual machine and load all the drivers. You can do this in Linux and Linux, Linux whether it's Debian, Ubuntu, Fedora, uh, seem to have no problem when I set up some of the servers on here. No issues with the drivers or anything special I had to do with there. You also can load a Synology virtual DSM, and then you have an option for others that just kind of provides a generic template uh, for loading whatever operating system you'd like to set up on here. As far as once they're up and running, run running host is called Elbert. This running host is called RS1221 plus. This is the one we're on. It actually lets you control the virtual machines from both. Once you've tied two Synologies together with the virtual machine, you just say, hey, what's the other one running it? It asks you, you tie them together, and now you can control both virtual machine setups from one or the other. Uh, I, it does this symmetrically. So if I go to the other machine, I can control them on this one and vice versa. Pretty straightforward, though, how it works. Uh, you get your usual functions of shutdown, force shutdown, restart, or suspend. And I like when you connect because it's got the VNC viewer, which I've seen quite a few times. And here we go. Here is the VNC viewer, and I have the IP address pulled up in here because it does have a virtual network manager that supports doing VLANs. So if we look here and we go to action, edit, and this is a running virtual machine. It's the one I'm connected to over here. And we wanna go over to the network. One thing about this network. So if we change it back over to this VLAN here, and I'll get to the network manager in a second. It does switch it, but Windows it does not actually unplug and plug it back in. So Windows doesn't think to do anything. And we actually have to do a uh, release, renew, and now it'll get a new IP address. There we go. Now it's on the different network. 
if you switch networks, it's something of note if the machine is running when you do this, because it's not sending a signal that it unplugged and replugged in the network interface, uh, you will end up with it, you know, not necessarily asking for a new address and you just have to renew it or, you know, reboot it and that fixes it too. Now, when you ask for high availability, you want to enable HA. At least three hosts are needed in a cluster required in order to enable HA. If you're not familiar with why, look up split brain computing. It has a little bit to do with that. All right, back to the topic. Now, here is the cluster where you can connect the other systems in here. If you want to add, it just goes through a pretty straightforward wizard. Uh, add local area network, add via its IP address, and you just point it towards the other Synology and give the credentials and it adds another server. Like I said, this is symmetric. You can do on both of them. As for storage, storage is pretty straightforward to set up on here and manage. Like any other storage, manage through the storage manager on here so you can set up the volumes, set up the places you'd like these to run. Uh, obviously, running it on an SSD is going to be more ideal, but if you need more space, spinning rust drives work fine as well. This is the network manager, which does have a warning because I think I have some things that are disconnected in here. Uh, but here's how you set up the VLANs, for example, and we can edit one just to get an idea, give it a name, throw this in here, uh, 1337 is the VLAN tag for this VLAN, and uh, then figure out which plugs it wants. So on this host, it's plugged into LAN 1. I'm not even using the other network interfaces. And on this host, it's on LAN 5. I believe the one that has the error probably has too many boxes checked. Yep. It's got all the extra ones checked that don't need to be because I have nothing plugged into them right now. So that should. There we go. Now it's a healthy network. As far as adding and creating them, pretty straightforward. It does offer the option of external or private. And if you don't choose a VLAN, it's just going to attach to the native network that you put it on. Images. You can download the Synology guest tools right here, and I have a DSM image downloaded. It's kind of neat that when you're setting up virtual machines, you can use Synology DSM as an option, so you can have DSM virtually running inside of a DSM. Uh, novel feature if you have a use case for that. It also does have the option to add DSM files from a local. So if you want to try running different versions of DSM or pull it from another system, uh, I thought that was kind of neat that it has that ability. Protection. It does have options for protection plans, whether you want to local snapshot or local snapshot with remote replication. So much like Synology, it's all integrated into their backup plan. So you can replicate this to another system. Back to what I said about having the VM Pro license to be able to do that when you have more than one Synology because it's replicating to other Synologies. If you just want to back up the files or back up things, that's different. You can choose different targets or use hyper backup to back the system up. But as far as like their protection plans and replication, just note that that's part of the pro setting when you have two Synologies as a destination. Under the settings, we do have like cluster notification and high availability and some detection in terms of interval. And that way you got to figure out what works for you. With the high availability, it can start the servers on another server if one of them fails or something goes down. Uh, but then you have to also tune it a little bit to make sure it fails in terms of the way you want and not just when you're unplugging something. Be careful whenever you have high availability because sometimes just a network card failure if these devices lose communication uh, can trigger a, an event of starting up the server somewhere else, which can cause some problems. Just, just a little note there. Logging, full logging and everything else. So you can determine, you know, the virtual switch was successfully updated or changed and modifications and all the other logging functions and facilities in here. But overall, I think it's a nice system. I, I think it works quite well and is another example of how Synology does a great job of packing a lot of functionality with a relatively easy to use interface on there. Um, the one thing I really haven't tried, but a few people have mentioned to me is about running firewalls inside there for testing. It's not something I've put any time in. Um, I'm not sure. Leave some comments down below if you say that works really well. I've had a few people say they got it working. Some people said they didn't. I did notice that specifically they announced Linux support and they say Windows support. They don't specifically say free BSD. So I have not tested to let you know how well free BSD works in there. But I've said this many times on the channel. I'm not a big fan of virtualizing firewalls unless there's a really solid use case for it because it adds a layer of complexity. It's not that you shouldn't do it. You should just do it knowing there's going to be a lot more complexity and potential issues you may have to troubleshoot when you do decide to virtualize the firewall. But either way, go ahead and check out. This is just a free service with Synology unless you want the pro features, which does have that license with with an annual subscription and thanks.
and thank you for making it to the end of this video. If you enjoyed this content, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from this channel, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon. To hire a Sure project, head over to lawrencesystems.com and click on the Hire Us button right at the top. To help this channel out in other ways, there is a Join button here for YouTube and a Patreon page where your support is greatly appreciated. For deals, discounts, and offers, check out our affiliate links in the descriptions of all of our videos, including a link to our shirt store where we have a wide variety of shirts and new designs come out, well, randomly, so check back frequently. And finally, our forums. Forums.lawrencesystems.com is where you can have a more in-depth discussion about this video and other tech topics covered on this channel. Thank you again, and we look forward to hearing from you. In the meantime, check out some of our other videos.